In this video, I'm going to do the derivation that gets us to the exponential functional form for how the charge on a capacitor varies in time. I think this is a helpful derivation to understand and that it helps you understand what's really happening in this scenario. So the first thing we're going to start with is thinking about our switch being closed such that our capacitor is beginning to discharge. And I have a few equations up here, so let's, let's take the time to go through them. What's happening here is just Kirchhoff's, or K's, loop law. And so that is starting at a point and looking at our delta V and then our delta V. So we have a delta V, a potential difference across the capacitor, and a delta V across the resistor. And keep in mind that all of your potential differences must sum to zero. Then we're going to look at the individual potential differences. So the potential difference across our capacitor is simply Q over C. And note that this Q is going to be a function of time. So whatever your potential difference is as a function of time is going to be the charge in that exact moment divided by the capacitance. And capacitance isn't changing in time. You could say, well, Dr. Ackerman, are you going to give us some weird question where some mad scientist is changing the capacitor size as a function of time? That would be mathematically beyond the scope of the class. So no, you're not going to see that. Capacitance will be constant. And then we have this minus. Why minus? Well, note that our current is going this way and our loop is going that way. So this is a decrease in potential and it's I times R. Well, again, keep in mind that this I is going to be as a function of time. Resistance is fixed. So the next thing we're going to use is that our current is actually equal to our change in Q with time, so dQ dt. And note that it is negative. Why is it negative? Well, the charge coming off our capacitor is decreasing. So we have a positive value of current, but that corresponds to a decreasing charge where this Q is actually the Q that is on the capacitor. So we're going to use this and actually plug that in for I, and we're going to leave this zero. So, so far I've used Kirchhoff's loop laws, the basics of what we know about capacitors, Ohm's law for the resistor, and then the definition that current coming off the capacitor is the change with time. So all I've done is plugged in dQ dt for i, notice that that minus sign cancels with that minus sign, and I've divided the whole thing by r. And that's because of where I'm trying to get with the math. So the reason r is now on the bottom is I've divided the whole thing by r, and 0 divided by r is still 0. So now I have this equation. Now, depending on how much math you've had, you might look at this and realize that this is a differential equation. I have q, and I have the derivative of q with respect to time. Remember that q is actually a function of time. Now, if you haven't had differential equations, or if you haven't studied them in, in Calc 2, don't freak out. We can actually do this in a pretty straightforward way. This is a simple equation to work with. But we are here trying to figure out the functional form of q as a function of time. So we're going to rearrange a little bit, and I'm going to move q, and so I have dq over q on one side, and then on the other side I've moved my dt over. And so this is a technique called separation of variables. So I now have everything that, that depends on q on the left, and I have dt on the right. So as you can see, I'm running out of space on the page, so we're just going to remove these first lines and move these up, and keep working from here. I'm going to integrate the left side, and I'm integrating from Q0, which was the original value of Q, to some new Q, right, that I want to find Q at some time T later. So the corresponding T integral goes from 0 to T. And again, if the mathematical techniques here don't make perfect sense, that's okay. This is, again, an important derivation, but it's not something you would be expected to do on your own. You can just use the final equation. So we do that derivation, uh, so we do that integration, and dq over q is going to give us natural log, and when you have two terms subtracted in a natural log, you're allowed to divide them, and dt, integrated from 0 to t, is simply t over rc. So at this point, I have an equation, but what I really want is q as a function of t. So what I'm going to do is raise both sides 
by e. So I'm putting e to the natural log of q over q naught, e to the negative t over rc. Now that would then leave q over q naught equals e to the negative t over rc, and I can multiply q naught up, and so the final thing I get is this. So q as a function of t is equal to my initial value of q, q naught, times that e to the negative t over rc. And just remember that we're going to call rc my time constant tau, and so that gives you some feeling that you're always going to have this exponential decay. For instance, if we're thinking about current, you're going to have this exponential decay that I'm quite bad at uh, drawing, but there's some time t, sorry, tau, that corresponds to 0.37, roughly, your initial value of current. And again, here I'm showing current, but you have a similar function uh, for charge. And if we were actually charging the capacitor, you would just do this slightly differently and you get that one minus exponential. So hopefully this makes sense to you. Again, you should be using these equations and recognize that you get slightly different forms for charge if you're Q, if you're charging versus discharging your capacitor. For current, it's always exponentially decaying. For the potential difference across your capacitor, you simply use that the potential difference is equal to Q in that moment divided by the capacitance.